Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Let's solidify some voiceover demo ideas. Let's talk about it. So the big question is this, how do voiceover artists like us who are looking to take our careers to the next level, but don't buy into the claims of needing expensive equipment and demos, start bringing in new clients? How do you follow a clear path to changing your voiceover side hustle into your full-time job and stick it to those that said you couldn't? Huh? Those are the questions, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Earl Hall, and welcome to In the Booth with Earl Hall, where we know how to grind and don't quit. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. It is definitely hump day, as we call it. Welcome into In the Booth with Earl Hall, where I show you how to start, build, and grow a successful voiceover career. Yep, once again today, your boy is standing. I'm loving my raisable desk here so that I can really get some stuff going and feel like I'm actually into what it is that I'm doing. Standing up is one of those things I think is just important to do when you're doing voiceover, you know, not necessary to do when you're doing a podcast like this or whatever, but I just feel a lot better standing up. But when you're doing voiceover, in order to get your full range, when you're doing an audition, when you're doing a demo, whatever it is, you want to get your full body into it. I was going to say your full weight, but I need to lose some. So I will, I'll just say get your full body <laughs> into this. Good morning, everyone coming in. Rich, what's going on, my man, over on YouTube? Folks coming in on Facebook and welcome everyone coming in on Twitch. Go ahead and give me a hey, what's up, so I can see that you're in the his house this morning. Why did I say his house? I have no idea. My daughter would have just shook her head like, Dad, you're not cool. Just don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you know, guys, tomorrow I'm going to be doing the webinar on how you can get your best demo. And um, it's going to be, I believe it's going to be something extremely interesting for most of you to tune into. It's going to be tomorrow, um, Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. There's a link in the description. If you have not registered for the webinar already, we've got tons of people already signed up for it but I don't want you to miss it. I, I'm going to be giving away some freebies like I always do um, that are probably going to be of interest to most of you. Um, those of you that stay till the end and all that other kind of stuff, it's going to be, I think it's going to be phenomenal and you're going to have some phenomenal resources as well to be able to utilize. Um, good morning, Dan. Scott, what's up, man? Voices by Storm in here always. Voices, I we're doing your character demo today. Uh, <laughs> So I'll be working with Storm. Storm, I've got your script right here, sweetheart. We're getting ready to get down and dirty with this script and get some things going. So I'm excited about that. That's why it's sitting right on my desk because it's like the next thing I have to do after I go off air. So I'm excited about that. Good morning, Conchita. Glad to have you in the house as always. The phenomenal script writer for Earl Hall Studio. Glad to have you in the house. Dan, Rich, welcome in. I want to talk a little bit about today basically to give you some voiceover demo ideas. And there's some things that I think you need to do, whether or not you're ready to get a demo done professionally or not, like with Earl Hall Studio, there are some things that you need to know. And there are some things that I believe that you can do that are going to be able to just make it all the better. I mean, if you're just starting out in voiceover and you're concentrating on like the freelance sites and things of that nature, it may not be... Um, Pertinent, I should say. It may not be a pertinent thing to get a professional demo done. And there are always ways to get a demo done on your own. And that's actually on the webinar tomorrow. I'm going to be giving away some free information on how you can do that. I want you to know whether or not you get a, a demo done professionally by Earl Hall Studio or whether you do it on your own, there are some tips and tricks and strategies that you need to know about um, in order to create your best demo. <laughs> because we can create your best demo. But, you know, I've said for a long time, look, if you're just starting out in voiceover, you know, to pay a couple of hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars for a demo um, may not be the thing to do. You may not have the money to do it or whatever. But if you understand your DAW enough and you understand how to process your voice and things of that nature, it could be a very good way to start. And let me just be clear. Most of us start with our own demo. Most of us don't go out and pay for it right off the bat. I didn't. The first demo I ever purchased was literally a year and a half ago. 
was the first time I ever purchased a demo and I didn't like it. Um, I was, uh, let's see, what, why was that? I was a member of voices.com and I said that I needed a demo or wanted to get a demo made and they sent me to some person. I won't call the name. I don't want to bash the guy, but he didn't do what he said he was going to do. First of all, um, the demo that was created, um, it wasn't, it wasn't a very good experience. And, um, I'm thankful that I had the experience that I had, quite honestly, because in doing what I do now with producing professional demos for people, I know what I felt I was missing in the creative process of the demo. And so I was able to include that in our process that we have at Earl Hall Studio to get your best demo created. But, you know, there are plenty of ways and methods for you to get a demo done on your own. And so I at least want to give you that information, whether you purchase a demo from Earl Hall Studio or not. I want you to have the information. The other thing that's going to be hit hard in the webinar tomorrow is, okay, you got this demo. What the heck do you do with it? What are you going to be doing with this demo? How are you going to shop it around? How are you going to market it? What are the things that you absolutely must do with your demo Besides, just put it on your website and listen to it every day because that's what you do. You, I know that's what you do. You go, <laughs> you go to your website and you listen to your demo, but no one else is listening to it. And so there are tips and t tricks and strategies and um, all those types of things that you just got to be aware of in order to make sure that you're doing what you need to do each and every day, each and every week, each and every month, each and every year with your demo. And a demo is something that needs to be updated, in my opinion, and this is from a standpoint of a professional opinion, if you're going for the big bucks, as they say, you need to update your demo in between six months to a year. Every six months, no longer than a year, you need that demo updated because things are constantly changing in our industry and you want to sound current. You want to sound like you're doing something right now. So it's important to be able to do that. What I want to do, throw out in the comment section, in the chat here, especially on YouTube, that's what I'm monitoring. What are the different types of demos? J just throw them out. What are the different types of demos? And I want to talk about some of them as you guys put them up. What are the different types of demos or what are the types of demos that you're interested in getting? There's obviously a plethora of different types of demos. Obviously, everyone goes for the commercial demo, which I believe everyone needs a commercial demo. I think that everyone absolutely needs to have a commercial demo because it at least show, it can show a range and it can show your skill. And it really is our calling card for what it is that we do until we get genre specific, until we get laser focused into what it is that we actually want to do and are getting hired to do in voiceover. So I'm waiting here to see what some of you guys are going to type in as far as the different type of demos. Lazarus has commercial character narration. Definitely. Um, those are a couple. You've obviously got the, um, we've got character, Rich is saying character, commercial, e-learning, e-books, Scott saying medical, Mage Pro saying video game, all of those, absolutely. Um, telecom or telephony is, I believe, the technical term, telephony demo um, for that uh, six-second demo. I don't, I don't know if we call it a six-second demo because that's how we produce them. Um, and we can get into that um, later as well. But let's just take let's let's take some of the top ones here. Um, YouTube intros, absolutely. Um, that could be a demo if you know specifically how to go after some of the YouTubers, especially like YouTuber influencers and things of that nature that will need them. Medical narration, um, great paying genre, absolutely, Conchita. Um, and you've got the explainer videos that are out there. What else do we have? I mean, the, the, the names of demos can go on and on. But I think what's important, especially the more niche that you get, you're going to want to get that particular type of demo made. Um, Virus is saying video game, Voices by Storm. I got commercial and character going. How about a different one for animation? Animation is one. Promos. Oh, my gosh. Promos? Like for the NFL, you know, for television shows, TV stations, um, audiobook demos, absolutely. Imaging, absolutely. Nobody put up movie trailer. I can't believe no one put up the movie trailer demo yet. <laughs> yeah. 
But at any rate, what I want to get you to see by taking a look at these different genres that we have, obviously there are a lot of different ways that you can go. I always suggest everyone, if you've never had a professional demo done and you're still trying to work out where it is that you fit into this whole scheme of thing, things, start off with the commercial demo. That is like the biggest calling card we have is our commercial demo. And then when you get more niche about all of this, you can really get into developing things like if you're going after the promo spots, if you're going after imaging spots or whatever, get into doing those things. Now, let me tell you this. There are some demos that are out there uh, in the genre. Some of you have named some of them already that I would not pay to get. Okay. The reason being is they're so super easy and simple to do. I just wouldn't, and I might be cutting my nose off despite my face, but I, this is just honestly what I believe. I don't think anyone should have to pay for an audiobook demo. I think you can do a freaking audiobook demo. Um, all you have to do is read a, you know, read a paragraph or two of a couple of different books. That's your demo. You know, know and understand if, for instance, I'm just using audiobooks as an example here. If there's a specific type of genre of audiobook that you want to do, if you want to do, what is there? Romance, sci-fi, action, adventure, um, fiction, nonfiction, um, educational, medical. Th there's the whole nine as far as what can be considered in an audiobook as far as what you might get hired to do. The only thing that you have to worry about in an audiobook demo is doing the voice right. If you're doing like a non, if you're doing a fiction book, like a romance novel, you'll probably have a couple of different characters. Had an interesting conversation. That brings up a conversation I had with Mage Pro um, about how to do audiobook demos. There's a standard to basically grind out audiobooks um, in the like, let's say, romance or the fiction category. Um, if you're a guy or a woman and you're playing seven, eight different characters in an audio book, what I did initially is I tried to give everyone a different voice, which becomes hard. Um, I remember the very first audio book that I did was for a guy, I forget his name now, but he wrote War of the Roses. And you guys probably remember that movie or whatever, The War of the Roses. He wrote, I, I did an audio book for him for another novel that he had written and I can't even remember the name of the novel but I played a older Jewish guy or I played an older or middle-aged German guy a young Jewish guy I played an African-American woman an older African-American woman and all of this and I tried to give everyone a different voice now they loved what I did but what I realized too is that I wasn't paid enough to do that and I shouldn't have done that and so a lot of times with audiobooks what you want to do is if you're playing a male character you know you can give if you're a guy you can give a little gruff, you know, or whatever, go a little lower, go a little bit higher when you're playing a guy. But basically when you have to do a female voice, it's just a matter of talking a little bit higher in a higher range and doing that. That's it. You don't have to make up all these freaking different voices for everyone in an audiobook. And if you take a listen to some, a lot of the audiobooks that are done, that's how they're done. But anyway, I digress. But I wanted to say that because I just had that recent conversation with Mage Pro the other day about doing audiobooks and trying to grind through them. People aren't paying you enough to do 12 voices. That's not, no, anyway, I've said enough on that. So with an audiobook demo, you don't need any help with that. If you're setting yourself up and you've done an audiobook and you're setting yourself to ACX standards and all that, that's all you need to do. That's it. Just take a couple of different lines from a couple of different books. That's it. When you're talking about a demo like a narration type of demo, it can be almost the same thing. Um, you know, you just want to narrate something as far as like a medical book or medical, whatever. One of the things that Conchita popped up in here, there's no background music. There's no sound effects. They just want to hear how you sound reading or narrating. That's it. Where things can get a little tricky is when you get into demos like imaging demos or promos or commercial character and video game. Because video game is like, that's a lot in a video game demo. It can get kind of heavy um, with sound effects. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about Call of Duty right now as far as, you know, doing things like that with video games like that. There's a lot of action, gunfire, gunplay, you know, profanity. It's, it's all in there. 
Um, you know, what's what's another big one the kids play? The the car one, Grand Theft Auto. See, I'm a, I don't know what they're doing today. I don't play video games, so I don't know. I'm just going back to when I remember Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty. I remember those particular types of video games. But now, the ideas that I have for you in regards to, okay, what type of demo should I look to be getting? Everyone, everyone, everyone needs a commercial demo. Everyone needs a commercial demo. One of the things that's interesting, or not interesting, is actually irritating. Um, <laughs> when people um, would send me, hey, can you take a listen to my demo? And basically all they're sending me is a commercial. And so I always respond back, this is not a demo. This is a commercial. This is an audition for a commercial. Um, it's just like one line or whatever. They're just doing one read of one particular product or service. That's not a demo. That is not a demo. A demo is something that shows your range. Um, it's six to eight different spots of different commercial reads uh, that you're doing. That's a demo. A demo is not a one minute commercial. That's not your demo. Um, if you've got a couple of commercials that you're happy with, you might want to string them together and take like 20 seconds of each one or 10 seconds or 15 seconds of a couple of them and string them together as a demo. If it's good, if it's good. Now, here's the thing about creating a demo. I would definitely take a listen to some of your favorite actors that are out there as far as VO or even VO coaches. I mean, you can find demos from people all over the place. Start taking a listen to some of the people out there that you love and respect that have some pretty good demos out there. Just listen. Listen to them and see how they're put together. You know, one of the things that I, I notice a lot when I would take a listen to someone's demo, um, they would have like this really nice fade in, fade out, fade in, fade out. That's not a demo, um, at least not how they're done now. You will notice that when you listen to demos, they're cut, boom, and it's right into the next one, boom, right into the next one. There's no soft fading out, you know, it's like boom, 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 and that's how they go. And so that's why I say take a listen to other folks' demos that you respect out here in the industry and listen to how they're put together. Um, literally, listen to how they're put together from beginning to end. Take a listen spot by spot, you know, spot by spot. Take a listen and see what you hear. And then you try to incorporate some of those th same things into your own demo. One of the hardest things to do when you're looking to, for instance, create your own demo is to have a script created. <clears throat> Everyone is always asking, where can I find some scripts? Like, um, anywhere. Uh, <laughs> literally uh, go to Walmart, go to the grocery store, pick up a couple magazines, look at the ads in the magazines and create a script based on those ads. When you look at creating your own script, you do want it to be customized. And that's one of our claim to fames here at Earl Hall studio, which it should be a claim to fame for anyone. But I hear people putting together demos that are supposed to be professional and I know they got those scripts off of Edge Studios' website. And I'm like, too many people have that same thing. You just don't want it. It's not a good look to go to Edge Studio and to try and create a script based on those scripts that are there because everyone has those scripts. And quite frankly, everyone else is doing it. Don't do what everyone else is doing. Take the hour it's going to take you to get a couple of different magazines of interest to you. Like if you're interested in sports, go pick up a sports magazine. Go pick up a bodybuilding magazine. Go pick up a, you know, a people magazine, go pick up just different genres of magazines. Look at the ads that are in the magazines and just create your own script based on those. Don't use the same product or whatever you might want. You may want to change that up. You may want to leave it the same. I don't have a hard, fast rule on that as far as that goes, because one of the things in your demos, you want to sound like you want your demo to sound like this is heard on TV or radio right now. That's how you want your demo to sound. You want it to sound like this is something that you can hear on TV and it, or radio, and it should click that in the mind of the person that's listening. Hey, did I did I hear this on the radio? You that's what you really want to have happen. So, getting a script developed on your own just to go out and do it to get something put out there. 
that's what I would suggest that you do. I would suggest that you go that route and develop your own personal script for some spots. And if you understand how to incorporate music and sound effects, the you know, I was going to say the more you do, the better. But what I mean by saying the more you do, you the better, the better the background conveys the same message as what you're saying, the better. You know, if you're someone knocking at a door, you want to knock sound in there or a doorbell sound or you know you want to have the interior sound maybe there's a baby or some kids playing in the house or whatever or mother's vacuuming there's these little nuances that can add that oomph to your production and it can be hard it can be very in- intricate but if you can do it if you can pull it off you can now I tell everyone, look, you got to start where you are. If you can't afford to get a demo created, but you know enough about your day W to be able to lay down your voice, process your voice and do something as simple as put a background musical track, start where you can and keep it moving. And when you can do better, do better. Um, And so that's a really important thing with that. Now, when you get into the promo stuff, when you get into... (laughs) (laughs) the video game stuff. When you get into certain things that are going to need a lot of work, you want to probably grab someone that has that expertise to do it. If you're going to go after that genre, because if you're going after that genre or movie trailers or something like that, you best believe that the people that are going after those genres are going to be bringing their a game. You got to bring your a plus game. I mean, for real, you've got to bring it with what it is that you do. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go over to, to some of the comments here. See what you guys are talking about. Oh yeah. Podcast is one. Yeah. True trunk. J. podcast is one. Um, keeping characters straight is the hardest thing. Yeah. Can see it definitely when you're doing an audio book inflection and attitudes are really what's important. Definitely. That's an important key to creating a demo. You've got to have some range in there, some dynamics going on. Hello, Andrea voices by storm. What's going on? Um, that must be Ryder Red Cross. He's got an R exclamation point. I'm just going to say Ryder Red Cross. Um, you're more than welcome for the advice. Uh, let's see. Ed, um, Ed, you crew. What foods cause mouth noise? I don't know. You know, people ask me about mouth noise. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to be, look, I don't know. Um, I see people, th- they'll make, you know, YouTube videos about how to get rid of mouth noise and all that from the foods that you eat. I don't, I just have never paid any attention to it. Um, If I have a watery mouth day, I know it. If I have a dry mouth day, I know it. And I know coffee probably makes my mouth even drier, but I'm not ready to cut out caffeine yet. So um, look it up on YouTube. I I don't know. Uh, (laughs) To be quite honest, I just don't know. I'm not the guy to ask about the mouth noise question as far as food goes. I can tell you how to take out mouth noise or how to take out stuff like that by using your DBX286S or by using, you know, um, the uh, some plugins for your DAW, which is just taking out ticks and clicks. I mean, watch some YouTube videos on that. You're not going to get rid. I mean, some people just are not going to get rid of mouth noise. But again, I'm not the guy to ask for that. And I submit to that lack of knowledge. Uh, (laughs) All right, Rich. um, It's like your resume. You only have a few seconds to grab the prospects. Yep, attention. Um, Milk products create phlegm. Okay, there you go. Milk. Okay, Lazarus. He's the, Lazarus is the, um, I christen you the mouth noise guy. (laughs) (laughs) John, so true, though, sound effects can be created from scratch. Abs- oh, yeah, John, that's our audio producer extraordinaire at Earl Hall Studio. The demos that you've heard, thank you, John. JC, my man, is the guy um, that makes the magic happen on these demos. Um, Mage Pro, you must be able to recreate your demo. That's it. Now, I, and thanks for bringing that up, um, Tom, because... One of the things that I've said for a long time, the home studio is the future of voiceover. And you've got to become an audio engineer. It is very important if you are not at the stage where 
you're being called in to another studio. You're just doing your own work right there in your studio. You may run into an issue if you've got this kick-ass demo, but you can't reproduce that sound. That may cause you an issue. That may cause you a problem. But you want a kick-ass demo when you want higher level work. Because at the higher level work, many times you may be doing work in your home studio, but that client is going to have you send your audio to someone and they're going to do what they need to do with it. So if you don't have that kick-ass demo to be able to grab the attention of a higher end client, it may not work. But if you're, you know, just on the freelance sites and you're just doing a couple things here and there every once in a while, you want to be able to reproduce the sound that you have created in your demo. And so that's why I've said for years now, you should be able to create the sound of your demo. You should be able to create the sound. Does it mean that all, and here's what that doesn't mean. That doesn't mean the sound effects in the music. I'm talking about the processing on the voice. Your voice must pop. I'm not talking about all the extras. I'm talking about just your raw voice that you would send in for an audition. If your voice cannot sound as good by you producing it, just your voice, no music, nothing else. If it doesn't sound as good as your demo and you can't produce that sound, it may be kind of rough because people are going to be expecting certain things from you. But it's always, you know, you can always work in conjunction with a studio to help you out with that. You know, it's something I can do, you know, if you're having an issue with getting an uh, you know, getting hired because your audio quality isn't good enough, shoot me an email. We can probably work something out um, to do those things for you. If you're going for this really, really high-end job or whatever, and you just want to make sure your audio is popping correctly, we can work something out. It won't be free, so let me just add that. But if you want us to take a listen to it, we can definitely do that for you on that. Uh, Mage Pro, uh, let's see, keep character straight is easy if you keep a library file of, e yeah, see, I'm not doing all that. That's too much work, Mage Pro. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not an audiobook guy. I'm not the guy that wants to do audiobook. If you're the person that wants to do audiobooks, take that advice from, from Mage Pro. You know, if you want to really get into audiobooks, um, I know that Anthony Pika, one of the folks um, on the website, um, and that's a member of Steps to Voice Over Success, He's really doing some really great things with audiobooks, you know, so it's up to you if you want to go that route. Audiobooks to me is probably the hardest thing to do for the least amount of money. That's just being honest. But there are people that are making lots of money in audiobooks because that's where their focus is. So if you put your blinders on, like I was saying yesterday, and you want to get into audiobooks, do what it takes, which is much more than most people will do. But if you do more than someone else will do, you're going to win. Um, let's see, John here, recreate the sound of your voice in your demo, the quality. Yeah. Um, Andrea, there are also enunciation tricks to getting around mouth noise. You guys just want to bring about, bring up the mouth noise thing today. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Conchita, biggest thing is to avoid dairy. Conchita, you're on that bandwagon. <laughs> No, but I, I understand that that is one of the big questions that's out there, which is about foods and liquids and things of that nature. I just think staying hydrated is probably one of the biggest things um, to avoid that dryness in your mouth. Like right now, my mouth is dry because I've been talking for half an hour and only drinking coffee. Um, but if you're in the booth or whatever and you've got to do something, you always want to have your bottle of water. That's just the thing. Even when I go into other people's studios to record, that's like the first thing they have there. They got bottled water sitting right there and you know, because they expect that a VO is going to want some water um, because there's a lot of talking involved. And all that air coming in and out is just drying out your mouth. Um, I heard the Granny Smith apples thing. Don't know if it works. Um, Mage reducing mouth noise can also be helped. By plenty of water before, yeah. Staying hydrated is, that's like the only thing that I'm going to ever say. It, look, drink some water. Um, you know, whatever. Now, if you've got too much going on in there, you know, there's too much uh, saliva 
in your mouth, that's an issue. Is that I'm assuming Granny Smith apples that may help dry some of that out. I, I'm not look. I'm not the expert here on this. <laughs> you want to talk marketing? We can talk all day. But if you're going to ask me <laughs> about how to get rid of your saliva in your mouth or add saliva, uh, spit. I don't know. Spit. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, look, I want to thank you guys so much for being with me here today. I hope I gave you some valuable information in regards to demo creation. Definitely want to make sure that you are on the webinar tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. There is a link in the description um, of this video right below or above if you're on Facebook. There's a link. Just go and register for the webinar right now. And... Um, It'll be about maybe 45 minutes tomorrow night, something like that. I don't like to have webinars long. I like to get in and get out, give you the information and go. I'm going to be giving away a ton of stuff, as I always do um, in my webinars. So make sure that you're there at least to get the information. Link is in the description. Um, also, if you go to steps to voiceoversuccess.com, there's a link at the top of the website. Let me scroll up a little bit above, below the logo or whatever that's there. You'll see it there and you can register for the webinar right at steps to voiceoversuccess.com or just click the link in the, in the video description. I'm excited about this webinar. It's the first time we're going to be doing a webinar like this. So I'm extremely excited about showing you what's possible um, with you getting a demo made with Earl Hall Studio. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for being here with me today. And I will see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Love you guys. Bye-bye.